Hello and welcome to a recording of how to install Cold Fusion 11 with the Bond Code Connector. We're using Windows 2008 R2 operating system with IIS installed as the base install. And as you can see, um, we have IIS running already. However, in order for Cold Fusion to install correctly, we'll have to modify it a little bit. So we are going to go to the uh, web server area of the operating system in the server manager and add role services. Specifically, we're going to add uh, ASP.NET uh, and uh, CGI in order, and then that would trigger the .NET extensibility as well as the ISAP extension, ISAP filters um, for, for everything to uh, get installed correctly. So we're going to run through that process real quick and run the install. Okay, the installation has finished, uh, so I'm going to just uh, close this here and start the Cold Fusion installation as well. This shouldn't have really changed anything at this point. So we're going to run the Cold Fusion 11 installation, and it may, in this case, require the C++ components, and we'll do that, and then we will restart the installation. So here it is asking me to install the well, these are visual C++ runtime. I'm going to say OK, so we're going to do that. So after the visual C++ installation completes, I will have to restart the installer. As I'm I will walk through the options now for the installation parameters that I'm choosing here. I'm going to accept the license, uh, choose a trial, and we'll do a server configuration. And uh, we'll just say this is the allowed IP address. And we really don't need any of these services at the moment, so we're just going to say next. and. We're going to leave everything here disabled for our installation and select the defaults for the directory. And the web server site, we, join, we will attempt to configure it for the default um, website, but unfortunately it's not going to work. So we're just going to do this and switch, flip back to all IS websites. However, I believe this installation will fail, but in, in our case, that is not as relevant since we're going to use an, an alternate connector. So I'm just going to hit Next. And we're going to give it an interesting password. Uh, and it doesn't like my password strength. So, OK, we set the password. Uh, we're just going to leave this on. And we're going to say install it. OK, now let's um, see whether we can launch the configuration with it in the browser. Most of the time, this would fail if the connector that uh, comes out of the box isn't installed correctly. Let's see whether it got installed or not. And uh, it looks like it didn't get installed correctly by the uh, Adobe installer. Let's see whether we can run a manual command prompt and get it to um, even acknowledge. So that would be yes. and vs config. Just see whether there is something and it looks like um, the configuration utility actually failed to install the uh, SAPI connector. So we're not going to worry about that until we actually configure the bond code connector to make sure that um, we start this up correctly. So let's not worry about what comes out of the box and let's uh, see whether we can get the bond code connector loaded. So first thing we do is actually uh, download it from reaforge.org and we're just going to say download this project and 
let's save the file to our drive somewhere. Um, maybe like put it under C temp save and let's open the containing folder. What we're going to do here first is unblock the zip file so that Windows will execute any um, libraries in there without blocking it. So we're going to then extract all its content and let's go back, temp, go in here and the only thing we need to do here is actually just to run the connector setup for now. So that's going to go on and it's going to say, hey, hold on, there's something missing, should I install it? And you say yes and just walk through the rest of the process, accept the license. The information here is actually pretty helpful in terms of how to remove the connector if you need to uninstall it um, for all the things that it puts on. Um, here is the difference for Adobe Cold Fusion 11, really it's 8014 or 8014 is the new port and Cold Fusion 10 used to be 8012 but uh, Adobe changed it to 8014 is Cold Fusion 11 so we just take that um, and then we are going to not enable remote access to Apache Tomcat so it's going to block that. We don't need to check any of these for the Adobe one and uh, actually this time We'll just say just put it on the default website and that's fine too. So we'll uh, only handle CFM CFCs and we'll, we will need to do sub configurations in, in a second. You'll see why. And we'll just say go ahead and install. Okay, we finished the uh, one code connector setup. That was uh, pretty straightforward. So now let's uh, test it out and see whether we get any a more or better response than we have gotten before. Uh, before we do that, however, let's check where the, the connector, since we've chosen um, a specific site, would have installed its setting file under a uh, bin subdirectory that it would have created under each document root, in, in, in this case under inetpub www root bin, and there's a setting file here, bond code agp13 settings, and we really need to uh, change that slightly in order to enable Adobe, Adobe mode processing. So we're just going to see whether we can open it up and uh, see whether we can make a change to it. And really what we need to do is we need to uh, enable Adobe mode and we mode is capital mode and it should be true enable Adobe mode. So that should do the trick. If I can save it, yes I can. So let's see whether we get um, a response from, uh, let's see here, from CFIDE administrator. And we really shouldn't at this point because there's one element missing um, and we'll find out in a second what it is. Uh, so actually it looks it looks like it, it did um, do a lot more things than I thought it would. So we're actually getting a response from Cold Fusion, but as you see, some of the images are not coming through, and uh, the login here as well isn't uh, quite. I think it should be white background. So we still have to configure slightly um, the Cold Fusion site um, since we're using the one code connector. And here, really, I'm going to point you back to an article, uh, a blog, a blog post that is a little older that I had written that outlines what the differences are um, and that's this particular URL if you want to note that down um, experimenting with uh, Cold Fusion 10 in this case but most of it applies to 11 what we have to do is really um, enable uh, these directories uh, to be also served by the bond code connector but in a slightly different way rather than using it by extension CFC CFM we need to add a wildcard type redirection for these um, uh, URL requests that follow this pattern or have this in the pattern. Uh, the easiest way to do that, and we, I'm only going to do that for one of them, which is the CFIDE uh, subdirectory itself, is to uh, go into uh, your 
web folder here and just create a new blank directory called CFIDE. Boom. And uh, go to your web server and enable a wildcard handler on that directory. So we're just going to dig into the default website. There's our CFIDE part. And then we're going to go in and go to the handler section. I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. Handler mappings. And we're going to add a managed handler, add managed handler. And we're going to say everything that comes in the URL, uh, in, from the browser with that URL pattern in there. We're going to have one code handle this, one code. And then we're just going to call that wildcard, wildcard. And we can probably accept all the defaults. And there you go. So anything into this request uh, into this folder in the URL and matching this URL pattern should now be handled by bone code which in, will, in return will send it straight back to cold fusion uh, 11 how um, let me just close this go back to my browser here we are and look at that so actually we are now getting uh, all the information from CFID when you look at the article or the blog itself it outlines more directories this is if you want to use these features in Cool Fusion. Let's say you want to do something with Flex Gateways, you want to use something with REST, you would have to create a similar and make sure, it, I, I would normally make sure it's the same case here. Um, make sure that then you add wildcard handlers and empty directories for that. So in, the approach with one code is when, when you want to expose a feature in Cool Fusion, you have to explicitly put it in so that the attack surface by itself when you install um, one code rather than the ISAPI um, particular redirector is uh, minimized so you only expose the features that you need to expose and go from there. So we're going to go into Cool Fusion Administrator and one other thing that I believe happened is um, the installation failed um, username admin I think uh, to put in the password that I wanted to use but we'll find out and if not yes so we'll have to probably reset the password here um, let me do that all that is pretty unfortunate seems like a lot of work around but Adobe did make it a little easier to do so so we're going to actually use a tool called password reset and we want to change the admin password and we're going to say Adobe123 boom and Adobe123 boom ah. It's good when you type it incorrectly. Uh, okay, so now I hopefully have reset everything I need to reset. And I also will have to restart the Cold Fusion engine services. That's this one. We're just going to restart it. So it's starting back up. Okay, cool. Fusion started back up. So let's go back in and see. It may not be quite started yet. So let's go back in and wait. So now my password got accepted and still saved from my browser's last entry into the form fields. And boom, there you go. Cool Fusion is running using the one code connector. Let's add a little bit of code if we can. So let's run administrator. And then I'm going to say now is. And then my super duper programming skills. And then there we go. Let's save as. And let's put it into the web root. And I'm gonna call it test.cfm and save. And we should be able to pull this up. And I'm, I'm gonna do this here. Test.cfm, it should be processed by Cold Fusion and respond. So this is all you have to do. 
to use the bond code connector installation. Most of the things that we have, to, uh, we have done in this particular demo are around the installation of Cool Fusion itself. Unfortunately, the ISAP connector installation failed and we had to work around that a little bit, but in, in our case, it doesn't matter or didn't matter that much uh, since we were able to replace it with the bond code connector. If you have any questions, please contact me through uh, the RealForge website by uh, clicking the contact project link and um, you have, would have to register and um, write your message there. If not, um, I'm uh, available also uh, on uh, uh, some other social media outlets. Uh, at um, bmancLT is my Twitter handle. Thanks again.